Good morning. Welcome to St. Michael the Archangel Catholic Church. Today we celebrate third Sunday of Lent. Please silence your cell phones as we prepare for the Mass. Our presider today is Father Michael Cannon. Please join us in our opening hymn, The Glory of These 40 Days. Please rise. gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I begin by welcoming everyone to church on, the, on this, the third Sunday of Lent. As always, I welcome those of you who are here with me uh, in church. We welcome those of you who are joining us from your homes uh, this morning, uh, wherever that might be. I welcome those of you who are uh, outside uh, here at, uh, at the parish and uh, uh, joining us um, through uh, YouTube. We welcome visitors. We welcome mem members of other churches, members of other um, uh, faiths. It's good to have you with us. Thank you for sharing in this time of prayer with us this morning. To prepare ourselves now for our Mass, we call to mind our sins. We ask God for forgiveness. We ask God for strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, 
who in fasting prayer and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You should not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave nor his ox or ass or anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Greeks look for wisdom, but 
we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of Scripture zeal for your house will consume me. At this the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for forty-six years and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the Scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name, when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. My friends, the Gospel of the Lord. In a 2003 movie entitled A House of Sand and Fog, the son of an Islamic man, Masoud Behrani, is shot fatally. Actually, he, he, he did not die from the shooting because Masad is greatly distraught and he begins to pray 
And at one point in his prayer, he says, if you let my son live, I will lay in the park, put bird seed in my eyes, and let the birds eat my eyes out. He's making a deal with his God, a deal that emerges out of the dark place in which, as a father, he finds himself. Many of us, I suspect, have visited that dark place. Stress and tragedy often bring us there. Most of us have probably entered into Massad's world of deal-making with God, possibly not as extremely as Massad. Deal-making with the gods has been around for a long time. In my homily last weekend, I explained how Abraham lived among people who sacrificed their children to make deals with their pagan gods, the Canaanites, the Ammonites, the Mari, even the Israelite king of Moab in 800 BC sacrificed his own son on the city walls to his god Shemosh to effect victory in war. Deal-making is hardwired into the human condition. It permeates social arrangements. If you'll do this, I'll do that. Or if you give me that, I'll give you this. Something for something is the air we breathe. It should come as no surprise then that dealings also make its way into the spiritual realm. I'll do this for you, Lord, if you do that for me. God made arrangements called covenants with, with Noah, with Abraham, with Moses, with David, and with many others. In today's Old Testament reading, God is making an arrangement or a covenant with His people, the Ten Commandments. These are rules of engagement between God and His people, and between God's people among themselves. And they were essentially a code by which to live. Now, this wasn't the first code to have been written, but this code was different from any other, because this one mentions love. Love the Lord your God. That was new. It was also different in that this code brought together religious belief and moral living. This too was new. And one final difference between this and the codes of the other people at the time is that violation of the code for the others constituted only in a crime against human beings. For the Israelites, the Hebrews, violation of the code was a crime against God. Again, a completely new orientation. In today's gospel, Jesus is in Jerusalem for Passover. As we heard, he got extremely angry, but there was good reason for that anger. You see, this was the time of preparation for the feast of Passover. Now, Josephus, who was a Jewish historian living at that time, wrote about this feast. He wrote that the population of Jerusalem swelled incredibly as Jews from Rome and Greece and Egypt and Tyre and Sidon and many other places made pilgrimage to the temple for the annual celebration of Passover. This was to celebrate Israel's liberation from slavery in Egypt. 
A pilgrim had to be in the city at least seven days before the beginning of the feast. And the reason for this was because Passover meal had to be eaten and could be eaten only by those who were in a state of purity. So pilgrims, Jesus among them, streamed into the city to undergo a week-long ritual of purification. Only when that was completed could preparations for Passover begin. And the Feast of Unleavened Bread then continued for another week, bringing the holiday to a close. So it meant that most people were in Jerusalem for at least two weeks. Now, all attendees at the feast had to make sacrifices to God in the temple. Some of those living close to Jerusalem were able to bring their own sheep to use for the sacrifice. However, an official inspector from the temple had to certify that each animal to be sacrificed was flawless. And for the convenience of the people, the temple sold animals, but at greatly inflated prices. And also the inspectors often hesitated to certify the animals brought in from outside. The temple had the market cornered, and Jesus would have seen this and it would have made him furious. Along with that, every Jew over 19 years of age had to pay a temple tax that was equal to two days' wages for an ordinary laborer, which was a lot of money. But the currency that most of them carried had images of Caesar on it. So it was no good, because that was against the first commandment. But the temple was again on hand to provide service. Money changers were present to exchange their currency for the imageless Jewish shekel, at a price, of course. It was Caiaphas the high priest, whom we have heard of before, who encouraged the money changers and the sellers of animals to enter the court of the temple and to sell, strengthening his control over the trade. Jesus enters this scene. As I've already said, he was understandably furious. He chastised them for turning my father's house, as he called it, into a den of thieves. The Herodian temple was a magnificent structure. It was the religious, the social, and the commercial center of Jerusalem at the time. It was an extremely important place. It is said that it, that it, it, it gave employment to 20% of the population of Jerusalem at the time. That'll give you an idea of its size. What Jesus did that day amounted to open defiance of the temple authorities. It was like attacking the legislature, the executive, and the judicial branches of government all in one. We may have some idea in light of recent events in our nation of the impact of such an attack. Jesus' attack made possible the charges of hostility against the temple that sealed his fate within days. According to Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus did not leave Jerusalem alive following this event. St. Paul, in today's second reading, is again addressing the Christian community at Corinth. Now, Corinth was a wealthy, sophisticated city, and Paul is trying to tell them about Jesus the Messiah. For the Jews there, it was completely unacceptable 
that God's chosen one could have been executed as a criminal. For the Jews and the, no, and the cultured non-Jews present, to preach God who had been crucified was lunacy. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up, Jesus said. With these words, he was replacing worship in the temple, including animal sacrifice, to worship of him, his body. No one understood this was blasphemy. The religious authorities had heard enough. Jesus never made any deals with his heavenly Father. Everything was freely offered and freely received. The relationship between Jesus and his Father was based on mutual love, not on any deal. In the, to finish in the world of deal-making, the great danger is that we come to believe that we are bargaining with God. I'll do this for you, Lord, if you do that for me. And maybe a simple question to bring with us. I ask myself, what's truly my relationship with God? Is it about deal-making, or is my relationship based on mutual love? What's your relationship with God? I'll do this for you, God, if you do that for me. Or is it based on mutual love? And now let us stand as together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The commands of the Lord are clear, but His mercy is great. Let us pray to our God, trusting in God's wisdom. that the church may guide her members in the paths of goodness and bring them closer to God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may learn to turn away from sin with all, all our hearts remaining obedient to God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and the suffering, especially those who are unable to gather within the church, may know their participation in Christ's body. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the values of our faith may guide us in creating homes that are safe havens for our families. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may enjoy eternal life through the crucified and risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Eugene Ramos Sr. and Charlie Aaliyah, for whom we are remembering eternal life, I'm sorry, who we are remembering in a special way in this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the parish prayer line, the intentions in the parish prayer boxes, and our own special intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God and wisdom, you have revealed your law. In mercy, you give us grace to fulfill it. Hear the petitions of the people gathered here in your name, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Blessed is he who 
the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Frank, our Bishop, and all your ministers. Remember also our brothers, our sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on each one of us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Michael the Archangel, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we now dare to pray as one. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with each of you. And let us turn and offer a safe sign of peace to each other. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ, the 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 body of Christ.
of spiritual communion for those of you who are joining us from home. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you, Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just real quick, just a few announcements. Stations of the Cross will be uh, prayed here on Friday um, afternoon, at uh, Friday evening at 5 p.m. Also, the Bloodmobile is here uh, in the front uh, parking lot uh, today up until uh, 12 noon. Uh, please consider donating blood uh, as the blood banks are in desperate need right now, if you can do that. This Sunday has been designated Safe Haven Sunday by our diocese and many dioceses throughout the, the country. And it's to promote awareness and to help equip families in safeguarding their children from inappropriate use of technology in the home. We have uh, prayer cards that are uh, at each of the entrances. Please take one with you. We had booklets as well. They've, they've all been taken. We will have more of those next week for your children or for your grandchildren, uh, and, and uh, we, will, uh, we will offer them to you uh, next weekend. And just a reminder that on Tuesday and Thursday evenings at 5 p.m., uh, Jim Holt, uh, who's uh, spearheading our capital campaign and our, our re renovation project, um, will be, uh, uh, we, we were at, uh, had meetings um, at 5 p.m. on Tuesday and Thursday, and we will have another at 2 p.m. this afternoon under the tent, and we will continue doing those. They're basically to give information about uh, the, the, the two projects, the, capital, the, the, the uh, ministry building and the renovation of the church here. If you have any questions, if you want to um, give suggestions, please come along. As I say, uh, the meetings are not long, 30 to 45 minutes, um, and uh, all uh, are welcome visitors and uh, uh, parishioners. 
Uh, and uh, also, please, uh, remind, uh, reminding you to take your worship aids with you uh, after Mass today. How many of you are visiting us right now? Okay, quite a number. Okay, probably about a third. Well, it's wonderful having you with us. Thank you for sharing uh, in uh, Mass with us. And if you're on spring break, as I'm sure some of you are, um, please uh, enjoy, stay safe, and uh, we hope uh, to see you uh, again another time. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let's go in peace to love, to serve the Lord. Amen. And have a good week, everyone. Thank you. And our closing hymn is We Walk by Faith. Bye.